Hey everyone. So today I decided that I would uh, tweet a horror story today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, today on adultfanfiction.net, the fanfiction and original writing community, M through R. My Little Pony, my absolute mostest horriblest day ever. As told by Pinkie Pie. <clears throat> okay, so. Oh my gosh! Let me tell you about my most absolute mostest horriblest day ever! No, well, actually, it was worse for Twilight Sparkle and Spike than me, and now that I think about it, I think Princess Celestia had the worst day of all. It all started when Spike spat out a scroll one morning telling Twilight to come back to Canterlot right away, but I didn't say why or anything. I figured it must be a big surprise party. Twilight thought it was really weird, you know, that Princess Celestia didn't send those hunky pegasuses, or did I put an extra S to come pick her up or anything? Rainbow Dash said her and Fluttershy might be able to put a light carriage or something if it was just her and Spike, but they can't really lift a whole lot. Besides, they were busy with stuff and Applejack had to work. Work, work, work. That's all she does, it seems like, but I suppose she wouldn't have been able to do anything either. Anyway, none of them believed me and said it was probably usual stuff and nothing exciting would happen, but boy were they wrong. So anyway, I was all like, Can I come with you? Please, please, pretty please. And all that, so finally Twilight said yes. Well, she said it really loud and kind of mean. I already wanted to come because she wanted to be in Princess Celestia's audience. I said, wait, Princess Celestia is putting on a show? A comedy act, maybe? But Twilight said it wasn't that kind of audience. Too bad, because I'd have really liked to see her telling jokes. That would have been so much better. So Twilight and Spike and Rarity all packed up food and stuff, and I made sure we had plenty of party supplies and treats. When we started galloping, I was behind Twilight. Spike mulled something about wanting to ride Rarity, so I told him to just ask her, silly, but he groaned and said I didn't understand. He seemed grumpy, so I went ahead a little just so I could talk to Twilight instead. She muttered something to me about Rarity not letting down Spike easy, which is weird because she's always careful with stuff, but when I said that, Twilight told me I didn't understand at all. Why is every pony always saying that to me? Anyway, so we get to Canterlot, and Rarity says she's going to clean up and look nice in case Princess Celestia tells Twilight she can see her. So, me and Rarity, Twilight, brush each other off a bit, but she's in a rush to see where she's going. She was all fidgety and stuff, too, because the guards weren't outside, but I told her it would be okay. I still thought it was some sort of surprise for her and Spike or something. Well, it was a surprise. So Spike and her ran in and told me to wait in the foyer with the guards there. They were all such party poopers. They wouldn't talk to me or smile no matter what I did. It was really silly, seriously, but they didn't even move. Stupid meanie heads, and tried to give one a cupcake, put it right up to his mouth, but he didn't even look while it smushed his face. And I tapped on him, and it was real hard. <laughs> no, I don't mean down there, you dirty girl. He was like really a statue, but kind of not, too. I laughed at first because I thought it was kind of a joke or something, but then I thought it wasn't very funny. For some reason, he started crying and ran to find Twilight in the park. Then everyone in the Grand Hall was frozen and stuff, too. Twilight was crying really hard. She was by the throne, and Celestia was lying on the ground. See, first I thought maybe it was some sort of joke for royal people, but then I figured if Twilight was crying, it wasn't a joke because it wasn't funny. It looked like someone had spilled raspberry jam all over Princess Celestia. Well, that's what I thought, because even though that's weird, it makes more sense than anything else, right? So I thought maybe she'd slip or something while eating toast, but Twilight was crying so hard all over her, and Spike was sitting on the ground all balled up and rocking back and forth, so I was all like, What happened? and stuff, but he wouldn't answer me, so I went to Twilight, but all she could do was put her head against me. Her crying got me all wet, too. Don't joke. This is a really bad thing, you stupid heads. Twilight just kept sobbing and stuff. She's gone. Princess Celestia is gone. And I'm like, no, she's lying right over there. That made her cry even more. Now I know everybody's right about me not getting stuff. Before I could ask, I got kicked really hard, and I mean totally so very much really hard, that I flipped over a few times and my head hit the floor. But I hit my head a lot, not so big. I got up and looked and saw little Princess Luna. Well, she's bigger than me, but still little compared to her big sister, which is why I guess she's called the big sister. But are you making me talk about that? Because it's not important now. Sheesh. So there's Luna, still kind of doe-eyed and cute after Twilight and us went all Sailor Moon on her, but she looked all mad. 
She had Twilight pinned to the floor by her neck, and she was trying to pull something over her face with her other hoof. I tried to run over, but my legs were chained to different columns, so I could barely even stand. Sure, I've gotten really tangled up by accident and stuff before, but I thought this was like the worst ever, I think. But it turns out it was Luna who did it. She was having a hard time, and I didn't know what was going on, and was all afraid and stuff, so I just yelled, Princess Luna, why don't you just hold her with both hooves and use her thingy levitating powers or whatever? She told us why later, but I guess it was a pretty dumb thing to say in the first place. Luna laughed really hard and lifted her huff up Twilight's neck, which seemed like a good thing. But when Twilight gasped and screamed all really mad, Pinkie Pie! Luna shoved a bit in her wide open mouth, kind of like what stallions do to me sometimes. But that's fun stuff, and this definitely wasn't. It turns out the thing she was putting on Twilight was a fancy bridle. It was really super pretty, if a bit big for Twilight. Once it was strapped on, tight Luna just let her go and smiled down at her like she was a cute sleeping foal or something. Twilight jumped and spun around, all red-faced and gasping, and all rawr like She hunkered down, and I thought she was going to charge, but Luna just started walking to her like nothing was weird. Which was weird in its own way, because besides, it was the way it was already way weird. But then, I mean, Twilight started backing away. She kept closing her eyes for seconds, and then she even scrunched them really, really hard a few times. Twilight suddenly got really scared and backed into the statue of a unicorn. Or maybe it was one of the frozen dudes, and the horn poked her in the butt. When she jumped, it made me laugh really hard, even though I know I shouldn't have. Luna just kept walking slow, and Twilight was whinnying and using her hoofs to pull the bridle off, but it wouldn't budge. She even turned and tried to use the horn to snag it, but all she did was cut herself on the face. Then Luna was right next to her, and Twilight whined all angry and stuff and tried to say stuff, but all it sounded like was, Gorgafnyost! <laughs> so here's my sister's famed, Faithful Student. <laughs> even though Luna's voice was still kind of cute, it didn't sound very nice. Then she says, What's that? I can't understand you. Well, duh, I yelled, because you put a thingy in her mouth. Take it. Mm. She used her telekin eats this or whatever. She pulled a curtain down and gagged me. Tui. She even used a big bow behind my head with it. I saw it on a mirror and it looked so ugly. I wished Rarity had been there too because she'd have at least picked something of better taste. <laughs> I made it funny. I know this is all serious and stuff, but you have to admit that was pretty good. Then Spike's yelling for Twilight to run away and get help. I look and he's on his side and wrapped up in more chains than at a hip-hop convention. But they weren't really gold and silver, just so you know, but now he can't do anything for us either. Luna snorts and snickers and she's looking at him. Twilight just stands there for a second because I guess she doesn't want to leave us, but then she runs to the doors. But right when she gets there, it's all smack and the doors close fast like pinball paddles and knock her back into the hall and she landed on her butt. She cowered and then Luna grabbed the bridle with her mouth and dragged Twilight over by Spike. More chains and spreader bars. Please don't ask me how I know what those are. <laughs> and stuff comes out. Then Twilight's four legs are spread and her head is pulled close to the floor and her bum is sticking up in the air. Twilight gets right in front of her and smiles at her and says something like, What's the matter? You don't like the beautiful bridal I made for my dear sister? Maybe that's because it makes you feel a bit drained. Then Princess Luna went on and on about how she spent months making that Auntie Magic, whatever that is, headdress for Celestia, then got an audience, so I thought, so both princesses took comedy acts? Well, she came and gave Celestia the present, and since she was in front of every pony, she had to try it on right away. After that, Luna froze everyone and put the Brit into the bridle, and she played with Celestia? I don't get that part. Luna went on about how Celestia only cared about Equestria and never paid attention to her until she wouldn't put the moon away. But then Celestia only went on about what's good for the ponies and how Luna was hurting so bad, blah, blah, blah. Gee, she wouldn't shut up. I can't stand ponies like that. But it turns out that she only pretended to be nice to Twilight and us after because she didn't want to go back in the moon and wanted to be a sneaky sneak and get revenge instead. The once mighty Princess Celestia just looked at me and cried when I was about to kill her. I almost took the bed out to let her beg for her life, but it was too pathetic. Spike yelled at her and said that Celestia cried because she loved Luna and felt sad. Duh. If I was about to be stabbed to death, I'd be sad too. Well, that made Luna really mad and she kicked him in the chest and then he couldn't breathe right. She told him that Twilight was just as mad crying for her life. Hey, I would. But I think Twilight was more scared for me and Spike. She's better than me like that. Then Luna's all like, On the bright side, at least you can kick the straps and taste my sister's spit. After I broke off her horn, she frothed like mad all over it. Ew. 
It's the second-hand French kiss you always wanted to give my sister. Of course, she could never show true love for any pony. She couldn't even understand that any pony loved her. Foolish child! She would never love you the way that you craved, no matter how far you had her snout up a rear. What? That's gross, Twilight. Then Luna said, Speaking of things in unsavory places, and used her skeleton ease this or whatever to take Princess Celestia's horn and shove the white end up into Twilight's baby place. She whinnied and screamed and started bleeding. Maybe she still had her cherry, but the end of the horn was just really rough and jagged in two. Luna made it go in and out while Twilight kept screaming through her gag, and I just cried. Spike wheezed and stuff, but and was telling Luna to stop, like really begging her and stuff sometimes, and then saying she won't get away with it. She told them how nice it is that she loves Twilight Sparkle so much because it'll be more fun when she, Princess Luna, makes her Twilight watch as she, Luna, tortures and kills him, Spike, and then horns her you-know-what with his blood on it. Rumor has it that he desperately wants to get inside a unicorn anyway. Huh? I don't get it. No, I'm saying it too. Well, Spike turns away and closes his eyes while Luna pumps Celestia's horn even harder. But then Luna makes wires wrap around the column and hook into his eyelids and make him watch. Ouch! But then she goes on. So you should probably your best to enjoy this, Twilight Sparkle. Once I have dispatched your little friend, I'll return my sister's horn to your womb. But the other end first. You probably won't even feel it pierce your insides as I thrust all the way in, but your body pushes it out in its own... Slowly opening the deep wound, your blood will begin to flow. It will be a trickle at first, but eventually it will be enough for you to bleed to death nice and slowly. Where does Luna get this sick stuff? After the carnage discovered and my thorough investigation is complete, I'll announce the terrible news of how Princess Celestia's faithful students was recalled for failing in her studies. When she told she was being dismissed, she went crazy and attacked my sister by surprise, totally wounding her. Then she'll say how Twilight quickly skilled Spike and the guards, but Celestia got a really lucky stab while Twilight had her back to her. Afterwards, I alone shall rule both day and night. Then she did that evil laughing thingy. Well, then Twilight is looking at me all sad and stuff. And I'm looking back and crying because I can't do anything. Luna tells Twilight that she's looking as cowardly as Celestia, but then Twilight says how Twilight is really begging her as a last request not to hurt me. After he said that, Twilight wouldn't look at me anymore for some reason, but the Luna is like, Of course. I wouldn't hurt a hair of her pretty mane. I know I should have been a little bit happy or something, but I was like, I didn't care anymore because I didn't think I'd ever feel good again. Sometimes I still don't. Then she really hurt my feeling. I'll just leave your stupid friend in the Everfree Forest. She'll probably make it back to Ponyville, which is fine by me. She tried it over me and went on. After all, Every pony already knows she's not right in the head. When she tells her story, those things she just cannot accept that her best friend was a traitor and murderer. Of course, I'll shower her with love support. And she looked at my face, like, really slow. Yuck. I shall even tell every pony it's okay to leave her be. Maybe they won't lock her up for the rest of her life, but either way, no one will ever believe her. Spike screamed that I'm not stupid. It made him cough blood, and it was really gross, but that didn't make it any less nice of him. Then his eyes light up, and he yells at Luna again that he's not going to let her twilight. It ends now! That only made Luna shove the horn into twilight really hard, and she stopped to laugh at him. Oh, what could you possibly do about it, little baby dragon? Well, Spike takes in a really deep breath, and his eyes get all glowy. Smoke was coming out of his mouth. Luna told him to go ahead because he can't move his head and would only burn twilight. But then he gasped and smiled really big. Oh, that's what you mean. Spare her the agony, excellent! You can die knowing you had to kill your best friend, and will leave even less suspicion on me. She explained why, but it was boring and I was too sad and confused to understand, or care. Besides, I thought that's what he meant, too. Because it's so sad because it was one of those really romantic sacrifice things where everyone suffers the most. Now I feel even worse, because, yeah, he did breathe his fire all over Twilight's face. I never saw so much. 